Hey there, this is Nikki Burnett. I'm the founder of Taste Life Nutrition and I'm a functional nutritionist. I practice strategic evidence-based consulting. Um, I work with clients all over the board, so autoimmune, uh, GI issues, that's probably what I see so much, or autoimmune and GI, but I also work with um, fertility clients. I work with uh, weight management and thyroid and hormone balance and imbalance and that kind of thing. Um, and so, I wanted to talk a little bit today about sugar. I was doing a little bit of research, and um, which is kind of one of my favorite things to do. I know it's weird. Um, but doing some research and came across an article about sugar. And wanted to, you know, I think that there's so much confusion about, confusion about sugar. What sugar is good? What sugar is bad? Um, is there a difference between sugar? Is sugar, you know, really that bad for you? We talk about how awful it is. And so understanding sugar a little bit and you know you can dig into this stuff and just go as deep as I mean you just continue to go deeper and deeper especially when it comes to um, the metabolic issues surrounding sugar and, and what can happen but um, one of the articles that I found said that as Americans we eat a half of a cup of added sugar a day um, and that's kind of a lot of sugar and so we're not talking about fruit sugar or natural sugars we're talking about um, uh, you know candies and sweets and added sugar to processed foods because you know when they take the fat out they add sugar because taking the fat out takes the flavor away um, and so they add sugar think about low-fat yogurts low-fat milks um, I guess I don't know about milk but um, like milk replacements things like that you take the fat out the flavor goes away so you've got to add um, add sugar to it to make it more palatable but then you know, you're you're taking one thing out, which is actually, you know, healthy for the most part, and replacing it with something that is not healthy. Um, and so that's a ton of sugar, and we get it in places that we don't expect. You know, we know if we're eating a candy bar or if we're drinking a soda, we're getting sugar. And I guess that would lead me to sugar alternatives are not the answer. Um, maybe stevia is fine, but think about it, it still can has the ability to spike blood sugar. I guess I'm kind of going off on a tangent a little bit, but I'm just gonna speak as it comes to me, I suppose. But um, things like aspartame, you know, these things are starting to show that they increase the incidence of Alzheimer's disease. I mean, that's a really big flipping deal. Um, and if you didn't know, Alzheimer's disease is considered type three diabetes. Lots and lots of factors go into um, uh, you know the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia as well as as any other chronic condition that we're suffering from these days but um, you know when it's when we're considering it type three type three diabetes um, that's really significant that you know sugar plays a really big role in, in uh, Alzheimer's as do sugar substitutes. Uh, so super dangerous, you know, um, just stay away from the sugar substitutes. They're no good. Um, and then of course, let's get into um, the differences in sugars, which I'm gonna start out saying there's not a lot. Sugar is sugar, the body sees it as sugar no matter what. Um, and we want to be really careful with the amount of sugar that we take in. So let's start with the best sugar, which is going to be fruit sugar. And I'm talking just fruit, not just the sugar from fruit, not just fructose, um, but fruit. So fruit obviously has all of the amazing things intact that we're supposed to have. It's got the fiber and it's got the antioxidants and um, the vitamins and the nutrients and the phytonutrients and probably all of these things that are other things that we don't even realize at this point that it has. So eating the whole food, you know, we, if you hear me or any other nutritionist out there, you're going to hear, let's eat whole foods. And so I think that there are lots of things that are in foods that we don't realize are there um, because that are beneficial for us. But what's so interesting is these things work together. Um, you know, if we separate them out, they may not work as well as we want them to, or as well as they're supposed to work. So eating, that's another thing about eating whole foods, whether it's the whole vegetable or the whole egg um, or the whole fruit is keeping it intact. This is the way God made it. And this is the way that we're supposed to eat it for the most part you know there are, there are 
times, then when you know we can take a component out, and maybe um, that helps uh, helps us a little bit. Again, I'm going to jump off top topic for half a second, but if you think of, think about turmeric, turmeric is great, but you have to eat a whole lot of turmeric to get enough curcumin, which is the active component and the anti-inflammatory component in turmeric, um, to decrease infl inflammation and to create the the um, uh, the what we want for the effects that we want. Um, also, mixing things like black pepper, um, phospholipids with curcumin help with absorption and bioavailability of turmeric. Totally off topic, but I can't help but to throw it out there because just eating um, turmeric, which is amazing, um, just eating it by itself, um, you're not usually going to get quite the effects. So. Um, use it, use it in your food. Don't supplement with turmeric because you can just use it in your food. Supplement with curcumin, with uh, bioparin, which is black pepper and uh, phospholipids. Okay, moving back to sugar. Um, one of the things, um, oh, so the best sugar is fruit. Remember that, but also remember not everybody can have sugar. Not everybody can have fruit. If we're dealing with blood sugar issues, we may want to take fruit out for a while. If we're dealing with a diabetic, we want to, may want to take fruit out for a while and could be indefinitely. It kind of depends on the situation. But um, we always want to have as many veggies as we can in our diet, but fruit is one of those things that can kind of go either way depending on health status. So remember that. Um, and there's, there, you know, know which fruits are higher in sugar and lower in sugar. Berries are typically much lower in sugar than, say, a banana or a mango or something like that, um, which are amazing. I think my favorite fruit in the world is a mango. Um, but if we're dealing with blood sugar issues, then we might want to, uh, you know, lay off the bananas and the, and the mangoes for a bit. Um, okay, so let's move into some of the other sugars. The worst being white sugar. I remember as a kid, gosh, it's so bad. I remember as a kid um, eating a strawberry. I remember it so vividly. My mom brought home some strawberries. I took a bite and it wasn't sweet enough for me. So I went to the counter, I opened up the jar, in which of course we had all white sugar, and I stuck the strawberry in the white sugar because I needed more sweet. I, we're training ourselves and, you know, unfortunately, our, our kids, you know, that we need more sweet, that the, the berries aren't sweet enough, the natural sweetness isn't sweet enough. Um, and that's how I grew up. I didn't know the difference. I didn't know white sugar was bad. And, you know, I think now when I eat a strawberry, how amazingly, beautifully sweet it is. Um, and it sort of, you know, freaks me out a little bit to think of adding anything to it because it's so beautiful by itself. Um, you know, the same with, well, with any other fruit, especially berries. I'm just a berry girl. I think they're the best. Um, but white sugar, without a doubt, is the most damaging thing you can do. Um, white sugar is going to be added to, well, that and high fructose corn syrup, of course, which is even worse. High fructose corn syrup, the liver doesn't know how to handle it. Doesn't There's no shutoff valve, essentially, for high fructose corn syrup. And so your blood sugar just, just keeps rising and the liver flips out and it doesn't, it doesn't know how to handle it. So if we're taking in the white sugars, we're taking in the high fructose corn syrup, um, one of the things that happens, we're, and we hear about type 2 diabetes, we can expect this, but what we're seeing more and more and more, and I'm seeing it in my labs, not my labs, my clients' labs, more and more is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So we're looking at labs and we see, we see liver enzymes out of range. Why is this happening? Because we're taking in so much sugar and so often we have no idea how much we're taking in. Well, I only have a soda a day. Well, I only have a sweet tooth a day. Well, I only had a cupcake today. You're, you know, whatever it is, you know, even, and let, let's, let's go back a step and say even the breads and the pastas, all of those things turn into sugar, all simple sugars, and it overloads the body, overloads the liver, um, and we get into this situation where we have this non-alcoholic fatty liver syndrome. When we would see this fatty liver syndrome before, it was always due to alcoholism heavy alcohol consumption and now we're seeing 
people not drinking, just eating so much sugar and so much refined and processed foods that the liver is overloaded and it can't handle it any longer. Um, so it increases triglycerides. If you've heard of triglycerides, you know, triglycerides are on labs. Um, there are three sugars attached to a fat. And you know, I was looking at this, um, this article and it just said that it was just a fat. And I, you know, I think that's a little simplistic. It's three sugars that are attached to a fat. And if we have an overabundance of them in the body, then they get stored in the liver. And again, creates a lot of stress and inflammation in the liver. What happens when we have inflammation? Inflammation leads to chronic disease. So we can say, yes, it leads to um, potentially Alzheimer's disease, can lead to cardiovascular disease. Um, inflammation, systemic inflammation is, is the beginning and the basis of all chronic disease that we're dealing with. And sugar is a big, big part of that. Um, if we don't get it under control, uh, in, uh, inflammation will increase and the liver will just start to, will continue to get sicker and sicker and it'll lead to cirrhosis. Um, just like with an alcoholic, it's kind of amazing to me how that works. So how do we deal with, um, with insulin levels that are out of control, with bringing down triglycerides, with, um, with supporting the liver? Um, I actually have a client right now who has um, an, a little bit of a hard time understanding why his cholesterol numbers are out of whack. And so we did his labs, um, and he said, you know, it, he, it's genetic. They've always been out of whack. Well, his genotype shows that it's probably not genetic. Um, but uh, knowing his history, um, and then I'm not, then, you know, getting his labs back, I'm not surprised to see that he has non-alcoholic fatty liver syndrome. And so we are working on that. But, um, so obviously changing your food. The interesting thing that's hard about sugar, uh, sorry to jump around a little bit, but the interesting thing that's hard about sugar is it, it, it hits your opioid receptors in the brain. So there truly can be a, um, an addictive component to sugar, both to sugar, to to breads and pastas, um, to dairy. You know, when we hear people say, I can't live without my cheese, or I can't live without my pasta, you know, sometimes there's an addictive component to that. So it can be a difficult situation to deal with. So it's not always just working with the nutritionist to change your diet. It could be working with um, a therapist uh, to help you to kind of get around um, that, that addiction. I mean, that's, let's just, you know, say it as it is. It's, it's an addiction. Um, so exercise, getting out and moving and you don't have to go do CrossFit, which CrossFit is amazing, but going for a walk, taking your dog for a walk, let's benefit both of you. Um, you know, going to yoga, yoga and walking the dogs are my two favorite things to do. Then, you know, hiking on the weekends and going and playing and that kind of thing. But just get up and move. Um, uh, if you want to do more, get on your bike. If you want to do other things, I think that's amazing. But getting up and going for the walk for a walk is the best one of the best things that you can do. Um, another th another problem that we find in situations, um, and this is something that we can test for, is leptin. Uh, 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 leptin resistance essentially or an insensitivity to leptin. What is leptin? Leptin is the hormone that tells you you're not hungry anymore. So I see this lie, I actually have heard it several times recently where a client says, I don't really know how to know when I'm not hungry anymore. I could just keep eating and keep eating and keep eating. Well, we do their labs and we look and, um, and they're out of range. And so, uh, you know, we can also assume that probably insulin, there's some insulin resistance as well. And so the things that are going to be some of the best things, in my opinion, are getting out, exercising, which also will help to decrease hunger, but doing, if you need to do some fasting, whether it's intermittent fasting, um, if you saw my talk yesterday, I was talking about doing a five day fasting program. Um, that is a, it's, um, I, Kind of considered a medical program, but, but it's it's pretty specific in the way that it's laid out. So if you want to watch that, you know, watch it, uh, the one that I did yesterday on fasting. Um, it's a great program. I've had really great success with it. It's been a lot of fun to watch how people react to it. Um, so those things can help um, with the leptin resistance and the insulin resistance. 
Um, and what else is there? I think that those are the main things that I wanted to talk about. Um, but understanding, oh, let's get into other sugars. Um, you know, I, I really try to watch my sugar intake. I truly do. Um, but there are times I want to have a little, you know, whether it's in my, you know, I do a, a it's called dandy blend, a, um, a chicory dandelion that's a coffee-like replacer. Anyway, on the weekends, you know, sometimes I want, okay, a little coconut milk and let's sweeten it up a bit. So I'll do coconut sugar. Um, still going to be a sugar. The body's still going to react to it. It's just going to react to it. But I'm very, very caref careful about how much I put in. Um, so, you know, coconut sugar is probably, if you're going to have a sugar, it's a better sugar. If you've got blood sugar issues, mixing it with the fat, like with the coconut milk, with some fiber, um, those things are smart to do. Uh, but if you have blood sugar issues, just staying away from the sugar period is, is ideal. Um, things like agave, that has been one of the most amazing um, marketing gimmicks that I've seen in a long time. Um, agave is, I think it is probably maybe just as bad as high fructose corn syrup. It is not a healthy uh, sugar replacement. It's not something that you want to have um, access to on a regular basis. Um, seriously, and I fell for it. I totally fell for it or early on before I knew the difference. So agave syrup is not um, the way to go. Okay. Um, maple syrup, you know, periodically. It's going to have your minerals in it as well as molasses. Um, a good quality molasses periodically um, is going to be a good choice. Again, keeping it at a very minimum, but that's going to be a good choice. Um, I talked a little bit about stevia early on. Stevia is an herb, and I think if you need a little bit of sweet, is maybe the best way to go, but you have to remember that everything starts on the tongue. So as soon as that tongue gets that sweet sensation, your body's going to start to react um, and your glucose levels are going to rise. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's not, not, it's, it's fine. It's good. Also think about this and this is getting, you know, probably a little deeper than most of you really care about. But when I see stevia, I see it's, it's white. It's a white powder. Stevia is a green plant. When I see a white powder from a green plant, what am I thinking? It's highly processed. It's bleached. Um, what are they using to process this, this plant to make it so white? That really does bother me. So you can get raw stevia that is just the herb um, and it's brown. Uh, you can get that at the store as well. So that's a good option. Grow it yourself. Put it in your tea if you want to. I think those are great. So, um, if you have any questions, let me know. Feel free to, oh, I totally forgot. And I'm going to post this below. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there is, I was, you know, just looking up some other sugar articles and this one's <laughs> it's kind of funny. 76 ways sugar can ruin your health. So, <laughs> um, I certainly won't go through all of these. Um, but I do want to, I think I want to go through a few of them because I think that it's really interesting. Um, but it says it decreases good cholesterol levels. One thing that I want to hit on when it comes to good and bad cholesterol, what we hear is HDL is good and LDL is bad. And this is um, simplistic at best and, and it, completely incorrect. Okay. Um, HDL can be good. And HDL can be bad, LDL can be good, LDL can be bad. So here's LDL is what brings cholesterol, LDL is just a protein that brings cholesterol to the tissues. We have to have cholesterol for cellular integrity, for brain health, for hormone production. If you look at the metabolic pathways for all of our hormones, what you're going to see, all of our steroid hormones, is cholesterol at the top, pregnenolone, and then all of your hormones. So we have to have cholesterol, and by decreasing cholesterol, um, it can create hormone imbalance, um, but it can also, sorry, um, it can create hormone imbalance, which just creates a whole host of issues. But on top of that, the lower your LDL is, the higher your risk of stroke, 
keep that in mind. If you are on a statin, if you're trying to get your LDLs super low, you don't want them super low. You have to have LDL. So LDL brings cholesterol to the tissue. HDL takes cholesterol away from the tissue back to the liver to be recycled or eliminated, um, which is important. Why we want more HDL? Because we want the LDL to be carried away and carried out. Um, but what's important to know about HDL and LDL is what we want is we want big, buoyant, fluffy particles. Um, and they, that's what they call it, buoyant particles. And we look for particle sizes. And so if we have HDL or LDL and those particle sizes are small and tiny, that means they're probably oxidized and atherogenic, which means it's a problem in your cardiovascular system. So we want big, fluffy, not small and atherogenic. We can have big fluffy or small in, in both LDL and HDL. So only looking at your HDL and LDL numbers is a big problem because we need to look deeper. We have to look deeper and always think about that when you're doing your own, um, you know, you're taking care of yourself, doing your own research, you know, um, always look for the deeper answer. Okay. So, um, what else can it do? So, addictive and intoxicating, similar to alcohol, a few other things, reduces learning capacity, um, increases risk of antisocial behavior, depression, alcoholism, obesity, what are some, dizziness, food allergies, uh, whoa, causes emphysema, sugar causes emphysema, uh, that's, I hadn't heard that before, uh, can lead to autoimmune disease, um, let's see, contraction of the appendix, uh, let's see, hemorrhoids, varicose veins, uh, gum disease, uh, uh, ADD in kids, eczema, let's see, a few others, weakens eyesight, premature aging, DNA, structure impairment, aging skin, um, fluid retention, brittle tendons, there's 76 of these. So I'm going to post this because I think it's super interesting to see what sugar can do to the body. So minimize sugar no matter what. Lots and lots of veggies. Lots of veggies, a little bit of, you know, moderate amount of good, healthy, grass-fed meat or pastured meat, um, good, healthy fats, some fruit, and that's what we need. All the good things in life. So again, have questions, let me know. Go to my website, tastelifenutrition.com. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.